welcome to aetcm today we're going to discuss a case about a 58 year old male who was brought to our er with a history of chest pain for about past 6 hours okay sir uh, on initial assessment the patient was conscious oriented mm. um and uh, in the airway airway was patent and uh, no secretions are noted coming to breathing uh, patient airway was bilaterally equal normal vesicular blood sounds are heard and respiratory rate of 18 per minute was here and the saturation of 98 percentage in room air was noted uh, coming to circulation pulse rate was 58 per minute and the bp of 180 over 80 mmhg all peripheral pulses were palpable and um, disability score gcs was uh, e4 v, uh, v5 m6 with pupil of tumor uh, equally reactive bilaterally and exposure wise uh, temperature was afibrile and the grbs was 183 mg per deciliter and patient was uh, covered to prevent hypothermia adjuncts to uh, primary survey uh, grbs of 183 mg per deciliter and uh, ecg was taken mm. in in ecg uh, it showed st elevation in one avl and from lateral leads v1 to v6 st elevation was noted mm-hmm. in a uh, certain secondary survey okay. uh, Uh, a patient was a 58 year old male uh, known case of cad uh, who has done uh, ptca two times over the past uh, in 2017 2007 and 2016 and he is also having uh, comorbidities of dyslipidemia so in a pa- patient who is having uh, previous C- cad who is having st elevation what are the differential diagnosis it can um, uh, can be another uh, can be a new myocardial infarction then then uh, pericarditis pericarditis is a uniform uh, universal st elevation in all the leads uh. not in uh, isolated leads like this here it is only in the anterior leads other than that stent may not relocate okay that is stent block uh, new new block. infarct or stent obstruction mm-hmm. other than that other other causes myocardial infarction means complete blockage of one artery uh, prince and metal prince metal angina, angina. Uh, that means uh, it's a vasospastic uh, lesion uh, here also uh, there also you get st elevation uh, okay then previous myocardial infarction history is there if there is a persistent st elevation what else you suspect ventricular aneurysms okay so these are the differential diagnosis one is a new myocardial infarction then next one is prince metal sangina third one is a pre existing myocard like a ventricular aneurysm due to previous myocardial infarction mm-hmm. there also st elevation can be persisting okay but since he is having severe chest pain with uh, uh, typical ec changes of st elevation more than two uh, boxes in the anterior leads but reciprocal changes are there or not anterior leads st elevation is there mm-hmm. anterior lateral leads it is there mm-hmm. but is there any reciprocal changes here 2 3 avf any any changes are there it is not, not there so uh, that creates some doubt that's all okay mm. but that doesn't mean that there is no mi mm. okay here there is no reciprocal changes okay mm. and uh, so um, the, pa- uh, the pain was uh, not a typical pain uh, patient was uh, having the pain severe pain central chest pain okay. it was associated with sweating there was uh, no other what is typical angina typical angina the patient will have a, a left side of chest pain uh, pain will be like a heaviness of heart and uh, it associated with sweating and uh, radiation of pain will be there uh, to towards the shoulder and the uh, arm region and towards the neck also okay. uh, so uh, the pain was acute in onset continuous in nature uh, pres- like a heaviness of heart uh, there was no history of any dyspnea or palpitation radiating pain and no history of vomiting abdominal pain also sir and uh, there is uh, no history of any orthopnea or paroxysmal or nocturnal dyspnea what are the other signs of my clinical symptoms of myocardial infarction other than chest pain chest pain is a very classical symptom of myocardial infarction some patients you can see they don't have chest pain but they have associated features some some have, have mild chest pain but some other features what are these other associated features they are sometimes called as angina equivalents mm. what are these features job pain job pain is a pain mm. radiation of pain 
hiccups one is hiccups inferior wall mm-hmm. mi hiccups then that's why whenever we have a hiccup we always take a ecg and rule out myocardial infarction mm-hmm. then and generally tiredness in team is that's okay uh, tiredness okay, okay. Um, vomiting. vomiting vomiting again inferior wall myocardial infarction most of the time it is associated with vomiting mm-hmm. any other feature angina equivalent mm-hmm. means it is breathlessness mm-hmm. so breathlessness vomiting mm-hmm. hiccups diarrhea mm-hmm. abdominal pain all these things are uh, can be there in patients who is having myocardial infarction mm-hmm. sometimes without pain also they can have these features mm-hmm. Uh, and the ecg showed the features suggestive of anterior wall mi was noted sir so <coughs> following which um, um, he has been taking a medication history uh, he is taking aspirin bisoprolol ticagrelor atorvastatin mm. metformin and uh, vogelbeer's for uh, diabetes uh, with with insulin injections okay and uh, last meal was taken uh, today mo uh, that day morning uh, breakfast was taken and no allergic history or no environmental social history was noted other, other than uh, myocardial infarction or cardiac coronary pain what are the other cause of severe chest pain other than coronary artery disease aortic dissection aortic dissection is one of the most important cause because that is the one thing we are going to miss we think that it is myocardial infarction we take ecg that will be normal cardiac enzyme will be normal so my uh, aortic dissection is one of the most important thing second one pleuritic pulmonary embolism so these are the two things we cannot miss other things there are a lot of differential diagnosis it can be gastritis acid peptic disorder uh, so many other things also can be there mitral valve collapse so that all can produce chest pain but mm-hmm. these things we cannot miss so mm-hmm. we have to rule out one is dissection of uh, uh, aorta second thing is pulmonary okay. embolism mm-hmm. so d dimer also can be done in patients who is having chest pain where myocardial infarction is not uh, not in the uh, investigation panel mm-hmm. okay so coming to general examination uh, there was uh, no uh, palar ictus clubbing lymphadenopathy cyanosis sir uh no edema also noted uh, jvp was uh, normal mm. and uh, bp of 130 or 80 mm hg with saturation of 98 percentage in room air heart rate of 57 per minute and respiratory rate Why heart rate is only 57 mm. why it is because he is on beta blocker mm. normally inferior wall mi can be associated with bradycardia mm. heart block all these things but mm. here there is anterior wall mm. mi no. so here the patient is on beta blocker already that may be the reason okay and in systemic examination uh, any other metabolic disorders you suspect when the heart rate is very low and myocardial infarction hyperkalemia hyperkalemia can be there uh, okay that's okay that is a electrolyte imbalance hypothyroidism hypothyroidism is one condition it is associated with coronary artery diseases diabetes diastolic dysfunction okay so bradycardia with mi you have to think about hypothyroidism beta blockers okay hyperkalemia hyperkalemia also you can get similar changes mm. very tall t waves bradycardia okay and uh, in systemic examination uh, uh, cardiovascular system uh, so s1 s2 sounds are heard and uh, all peripheral pressures are ha- palpable what which abnormal sound is alarming in heart sounds um, in mi you can get uh, uh, pan systolic murmur that is late stage of mi you can get rupture of uh, uh-huh. ventricle or uh, sorry ventricular, ventricular septal defect you can get uh-huh. but s3 is very important if you are getting s3 that's a sign of failing heart okay uh-huh. so that we can look for if it is there it is a it is not a good sign and uh, the uh, re- pulse was a regular rhythm and uh, in coming to respiratory system air entry was bilaterally equal normal vesicular blood sounds were held and adequate chest excursion was present per abdominal uh, it was uh, soft and palpable no uh, tenderness was noted and cns patient was conscious and oriented and uh, we did the uh, further lab in- investigations were also said uh, which showed uh, troponin uh, test was done which was elevated sir CKMB CKMB was elevated 6.36 in initial both are elevated CKMB yeah. and troponin troponin was in so which condition CKMB is more specific than troponin myocardial infarction means first and most important investigation is troponin iort but one condition CKMB is better than CKMB troponin 
reinfarction right. suppose you you admit a patient who is having myocardial uh, infarction uh, you thrombolyze or you do uh, some angioplasty yeah. but again if the patient is developing chest pain you mm. cannot do mm. troponin i because yeah. it will be yeah. persistently yeah. elevated for some more days yeah. whereas the, for, by 48 hours this yeah. cam will come down again if it is increasing that is a yeah. uh, that is a sign of reinfarction so reinfarction always think about c cam b but otherwise troponin i and t is very very useful and uh, can you get a troponin i elevation in other than conditions like other conditions than myocardial infarction ckd ckd can be slightly elevated then sepsis sepsis mm-hmm. okay okay and uh, uh, for, for the further management uh, uh, as patient is having uh, anterior lateral wall mi mm. uh, st elevation mi uh, we are uh, we advise any other change in ecg you can <coughs> diagnose mi other than st elevation what are the types of mi you know and according to ecg how many types are there any neon cerebral so st elevation mm. mi non st no, no, elevation no, no, mi that means st depression or deeply <coughs> inverted tv lbv new onset mm. lbv so these are the changes which will tell you that it may be mi mm. okay then again you need to have a elevated troponin i or c cam b mm. okay so ecg wise you have three types of mi okay one is st elevation mi non st elevation mi and new onset lbv okay and uh, for the patient uh, we advise uh, uh, ptca mm. percutaneous transdominal coronary an- angioplasty mm. but the patient was not willing mm. and uh, fa- following which uh, we advise for the thrombolysis and the patient was uh, patient of the thrombolysis and thrombolysis was done sir okay and for- the bp is very high like 200 by 140 what do you do on acute mi who is having very high bp and you want to thrombolyze what do you do that is one of the contraindication for mi mm. very high bp 220 by 140 150 what do you do it's not an ntg infusion what is the ideal drug ntg uh-huh. infusion is good uh-huh. beta blocker beta, beta blocker just throw it in Hmm. Okay, beta blocker beta like metoprolol or labetrolol. Okay. 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 So, beta blocker is an ideal drug. Okay. So, that should be started and control the BP, then only you can thrombolyze. Otherwise, there is a high chance of bleeding. Okay. The BP is very low, what do you do? Like uh, 100 by 40, what do you do? There also you cannot thrombolyze. You have to increase the BP by starting something, then only you can try even thrombolysis. Mm-hmm. One of the most important complication during thrombolysis is hypotension. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. you have to be very careful. Both high BP, low BP are relative contraindication for thrombolysis. <coughs> okay. Before thrombolysis, we also uh, gave the patient uh, dose of uh, uh, dispirin, uh, aspirin 325 mg mm-hmm. with the ticagrel of uh, 190 mg. And But you are telling already patient is on these drugs. Should we give it again? Uh, 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 Ticagrel of 90 can be... <laughs> you are telling me this patient uh-huh. is already on this drug. Yes. Should we give it again, I am asking? Yes. It has to be yes. given. Yes. Because we don't know whether the patient has taken or not. Mm-hmm. So, to make sure that we are giving an additional dose. Mm-hmm. Okay. Both aspirin, ticagrel oil has to be given. Mm-hmm. Okay. And... Uh, aspirin, what is the dose? Aspirin, uh, 320, uh, 300, 325 mg, sir. Okay. What is aspirin resistance? Have you read about aspirin resistance? aspirin resistance means many patients on aspirin that only blocks one of the pathways of platelet aggregation mm-hmm. okay so if there is aspirin resistance or even on aspirin patient may develop coronary syndromes or uh, stroke all these things mm-hmm. okay we cannot prove it mm-hmm. but there is aspirin aspirin resistance syndrome okay how do you tackle that add a second antiplatelet you add another antiplatelet mm-hmm. because aspirin uh, platelet aggregation has got three or four uh, pathways mm-hmm. so you can use different uh, types of drugs mm-hmm. okay so aspirin resistance is known and it is common also mm-hmm. okay uh, and uh, other than that uh, uh, second uh, ecg after tr- thrombolysis uh, uh, we uh, repeated an ecg and uh, st elevation scan during thrombolysis what all complication you can anticipate so th- how do you thrombolyze this patient what drug you used uh, here we use uh, tenacitabine sir okay so during thrombolysis what are the complications you can and 
or what are the other drugs you can use streptokinase streptokinase urokinase altiplase tenecteplase okay what are the complications you can anticipate during thrombolysis hypotension hypotension that is due to that is due to, normally is due to allergy allergy hmm. anaphylaxis okay then most commonly anaphylaxis and anaphylaxis arrhythmias what arrhythmia you get what is reperfusion arrhythmia uh, ventricular what is the ventricular rhythm Get accelerated, idea ventricular. <laughs> accelerated idea ventricular rhythm is different. Uh-huh. You get idea ventricular uh-huh. rhythm. Slow VT. Mm-hmm. Slow VT. Rate is very low. Mm-hmm. Wide complex tachycardia. Mm-hmm. Sorry, wide complex rhythm, but mm-hmm. rate is very low. Mm-hmm. If the rate is more than 100, you call, you call it as accelerated idea mm-hmm. ventricular. So here you get idea ventricular rhythm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so reperfusion arrhythmia is wide complex rhythm, which is heart rate is less than 100. Mm-hmm. Okay, is it good or bad? Yes. it's good mm. it, it shows the reperfusion has occurred mm. it's a good arrhythmia actually okay. during thrombolysis mm. okay then then uh, reperfusion reperfusion arrhythmia only uh-huh. told other complication mm. in mi which we got acute pulmonary edema the patient can have acute pulmonary edema then Ah, capillary muscle dysfunction, dysfunction can be there vst can occur mm. then mm. you can get lot of arrhythmias mm. reperfusion arrhythmia is a good arrhythmia mm. you can get other arrhythmias mm. vt can be there mm. so, svt can be there mm. so many arrhythmias also can be there failure is one of the most important thing common thing mm. okay mm. then what happened a patient after a, a thrombolysis uh, the st elevations ca- came down repeat mm. ecg was checked and patient is uh, normal now sir so after thrombolysis what all things you continue for the patient so you thrombolyze the patient yes sir okay uh, then after that what all things you can continue uh, antiplatelets uh, antiplatelets like uh, aspirin what is the dose of aspirin to be continued 90 90 primary prevention of aspirin is by 7 75 secondary prevention by 150 so 150 mg you have to give mm. okay daily then ticagrelor mm. okay then atrovastatin what is the dose of atrovastatin 40 normally we give 80 mg and give 40 mg cut to be continued okay if it is rosuvastatin 20 half of the dose okay 40 and 20 20 okay then in heparin heparin what is the role of heparin it's anti thrombin anti thrombin action mm. so what 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 is the uh, use of that uh, it can like uh, prevents further clot further clot and it uh, can also prevent deep vein thrombosis, deep vein thrombosis. Mm. so heparin has to be given mm-hmm. okay then beta uh, beta blockers compelling indication is one drug is beta blocker mm-hmm. okay why beta blocker is started prevention of arrhythmia prevention of arrhythmia is correct but what else What is the action of beta blocker on the heart? Uh, heart rate. Heart rate reduces. Mm. Heart rate reduces. What happens to the oxygen consumption of myocardium? Decreases. It decreases. Mm. The need of oxygen comes down. So that is the main use of beta blocker. What is the next drug? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. AC inhibitor AC or, uh, or ARB. Mm. What is the action of that? Remodeling. Prevention of cardiac remodeling. Okay, cardiac remodeling. Mm. Third drug? Diabetic. which diuretic uh, spironolactone spironolactone with lasix spironolactone is started for di- remodeling mm-hmm. lasix is started for mm-hmm. volume uh, mm-hmm. removal mm-hmm. okay anything else you want to give sorbitrate what is sorbitrate mm-hmm. Nit- nitrate nitrate mm-hmm. okay how do you give nitrate sublingual what is the dose of nitrate in uh, acute myocardial infarction or acute angina dose 5 mg 10 mg 3 times when will you give last dose of uh, ntg or uh, sorbitrate is is it uh, uh, mononitrate or dinitrate sorbitrate is uh, mononitrate is long acting drug so bd can be given this has to be given 3 times. times okay when will you give the last dose of nitrate in a day that is very important so what is it 
ഇത് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് എസ് നൈട്രേറ്റ് ഫ്രീ ഇൻറ്റർവെൽ ഓക്കെ ഇഫ് യു ഗീവ് ഇൻ ദ നൈറ്റ് ടൈം അറൗണ്ട് ടെൻ ലെവൻ ഓ ക്ലോക്ക് ഇഫ് യു ഗീവ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഡേ മോർണിംഗ് വിൽ ബി ഇൻഎഫക്റ്റീവ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് എസ് ടാക്കിഫിലാക്സ് സോ യു കനോട്ട് ഗീവ് നൈട്രേറ്റ് വെൻ എവർ യു വോണ്ട് യു ഹാവ് ടു ഗീവ് അറ്റ് ലീസ്റ്റ് എയ്റ്റ് അവേഴ്സ് നൈട്രേറ്റ് ഫ്രീ ഇൻറ്റർവൽ ഹാസ് ടു ബി ഗീവൺ ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ സ്റ്റാർട്ടിംഗ് എൻ ടി ജി ഇൻഫ്യൂഷൻ ഹൗ ഡു ഗീവ് എൻ ടി ജി ഇൻഫ്യൂഷൻ എൻ ടി ജി ഇൻഫ്യൂഷൻ ഹൗ ഡു ഗീവ് means we start from infusion starting with a small dose like 5 microgram per minute then we dilute it every 15 to 30 minutes like assessing the bp but only the maximum and tea started for both condition one is uh, for chest pain other for for, uh, for bp, BP. both doses are different totally different so we can increase by increments of like 5 or 10 microgram per minute we can increase but only up to a maximum 24 to 48 hours maximum okay. at least 24 hours then you have to stop it otherwise it will not work if you continue for uh, more than uh, uh, 30 hours or 40 hours then it will slowly the effect will come down mm-hmm. okay so no matter how much dose we increase there won't be effect yeah. okay so if you are not able to give beta blocker because the patient is having asthma and uh, beta blocker can sometimes increase asthma mm-hmm. what is the alternative calcium blocker which calcium yeah, yeah. perapamil yeah. or diltiazem mm-hmm. that can be tried so if beta blockers are not there then you give calcium channel blockers mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and what happened to this patient patient is stable right now sir uh-huh. after thrombolysis uh, elevation came down and uh-huh. patient is uh, uh, in a state of recovery right now. okay what else what other things you have to give in icu for this patient other than your routine treatment one more, one more thing is very important yeah after thrombolysis is a lot of opioids and health ah we are giving lot of opioids so uh-huh. what is the side effect of opioids constipation constipation what is, what happens if the patient develops constipation again can go stress induced stress induced again Begin chest pain can be induced during uh, defecation Training. so uh, you have to give laxatives. laxatives so that is also very important mm-hmm. and one more complication is small, uh, all these drugs can produce sometimes uh, uh, urinary retention, retention also yeah. so if catheterization is needed mm-hmm. you have to catheterize before giving thrombolysis mm-hmm. okay after thrombolysis uh, it will be very difficult to catheterize sometimes patient can bleed mm-hmm. so all these things should be taken care okay so thrombolysis is one part when we are thrombolyzing we have to be very careful when you are taking for angioplasty it is safe okay but since the patient is not ready we have to thrombolyze while thrombolyzing we have to be very careful okay what else yeah. so as per guidelines actually if a patient is coming with chest pain the ideal recommended treatment is pca particular yeah. so that is angio angiogram and yes. angioplasty mm-hmm. is very important yeah. so ideal recommend time is with If you are on arrival, within 90 minutes, we have taken the patient for PCI. Okay. Door to needle time is 90 minutes. But if they are not willing or due to some other reason, we are not able to do that. Within 30 minutes, we have to start thrombolysis. Okay. So thrombolysis, we can start even up to 12 hours after the onset of chest pain. Mm-hmm. But after that, then the only option we have is PCC. Okay. Uh, then, uh, drugs, there are multiple drugs which we can opt for, for PCI. Okay. Uh, starting from like uh, the preferred drug will be like in order to place in any place okay and the place will be like dose uh, uh, weight based yeah. depending on different weight there are different doses available okay. order to place will be like above 67 uh, will be one dose that is 50 mg as an iv bolus followed by 50 mg over 30 minutes and 35 over the next one hour so basically two hour dosage will be for order to place so there are multiple drugs which we can opt depending on the patient's status and all that So <clears throat> before thrombolysis as I said we have to a uh, lot other contraindications like any uh, like uh, um, extremely high hypertensive or hypertension again is a contraindication and also any status of any other instability like even if it, it's a case of acute pulmonary edema or something like patient going into respiratory failure we have to like secure the airway and breathing first before uh, starting for thrombolysis the patient is in high bp with mm. pulmonary edema mm. with myocardial infarction what is the ideal drug uh, for this thing uh, and again on uh, during uh, this thing uh, ongoing uh, thrombolysis the main thing to watch for is arrhythmias in time for arrhythmia can occur but uh, reperfusion arrhythmias like idiotic rhythms are actually more of a good sign than a like a uh, this thing so which we have to continuously monitor the patient uh, which but when not, not to have intervene if the patient is not going into any stain of instability uh, then again 
after uh, this thing also uh, thrombosis also again you have to watch for 24 hours for any signs of any bleeding or any other complications which you have to continuously monitor the patient and uh, along with that we can start and continue our other drugs like blue and this thing uh, statins and along with that heparin also should be continued uh, so then again we have to uh, on this we have to advise for follow up and also other um, things which the patient has to continue on at home also which we can like dietary modifications and all that which we can advise the patient especially if the patient is diabetic and all that we can advise for low carb diet and all that which we can advise during the uh, distress time then also advise for regular follow up and all that so with the basic management of exercise exercise is actually and will you mobilize the patient uh, mobilization actually as tolerated, we, we can uh, mobilize as soon as possible. Uh, we can as early as possible, we can mobilize. Okay. The only thing is the tolerance of the patient, depending on the symptoms, we can mobilize the patient. But as early as possible is the recommended. Uh, so. Okay, thank you. Yes. Mm.